Today we're going to learn how to make an Ajax call with WordPress. So first we're going to go through an example on how to do it on the back end admin area of WordPress. Then we'll jump over to the front and we'll do an example that's a little bit more cool, a little bit more fancy on the front end area of WordPress. So Ajax in general can be hard to understand and if you throw WordPress into the mix it makes it super confusing. So if you found yourself screaming at the monitor, why is this not working? Then don't feel bad, you're not alone, I've been in the same situation. But that said, by the end of this video, you're gonna be firing off WordPress Ajax calls like a pro. So let's get into it. Hey everyone, my name is Sean Hayes and my company is Share Web Design. Let's get started with this tutorial. I created a complete guide for you on my website to make it super easy to learn Ajax with WordPress. You don't need to head over there right now, but at some point you're going to want to download the example files. So I wanted to show you how to get there. So you're going to want to scroll down from this video into the YouTube notes um, and then click on that link so you can get to this page, which is sharewebdesign.com forward slash blog forward slash WordPress dash Ajax dash call. <laughs> I think I got that right. And uh, once you get here, uh, scroll down a little bit. And this is the chapters. Each one of these icons will take you to a section of the page. First one is what is Ajax? So let's click on that guy there. So if you're not familiar with what Ajax is used for in the wild, Gmail was the first thing I think to put Ajax on the map, which is rather than reload the page every time you click on an email or a different place within Gmail, it magically just pops it up with JavaScript and you don't have to reload the page, which is really cool, really, really cool. And that's Ajax. The next thing I remember coming on the map was probably Google Suggest. Maybe there's some other ones, but the first one I remember. And that does this little autocomplete, read your mind, magical, crazy thing that I use every day and is so awesome. That's also Ajax. So let's learn how to use some of this cool stuff. So let's click on this start learning Ajax icon and come down here and we're going to go through um, three little simple steps. So the first thing you're going to want to do is click on this download button. And what that's going to do is give you the PDF guide and example files. Um, full disclosure, it's going to ask for your email. So if you're not into that, which I totally understand, sometimes I don't want to give out my email either, then you can also just use the, the, the code snippets here, which is the JavaScript and the PHP um, snippets. But it is useful to have the example files. You can just copy and paste directly within your code editor. And the PDF guide is super cool. So after you download it, for me, it downloads in my downloads folder. Double click on that zip file, open that guy up. And this is that um, that PDF that I was talking about. My graphics artist made this. She did an amazing job, super cool. The girl's got some talent. So that's good to have, you know, if you don't have internet connection or you just want it, you know, easy access to it. You don't have to go find the, the web page. That, that's super useful to have. But what we're looking for here is this WordPress Ajax call on the back end, um, this PHP file right here. This is just going to make a, an Ajax call on the back end of WordPress when you log in. So it makes it really easy to understand if, you, if you're like, what the heck is going on with this? Ajax? I don't, I don't understand. And I just don't get how this process is working. This is going to be one of those aha moments for you. So open up this guy. I use Atom um, to as a code editor. It's super cool. Best part is it's free, which is awesome. GitHub uh, created this one, I think. You do uh, need also a WordPress environment in order to go through this tutorial. It can be on your local, on your server, wherever, as long as you have access to change the backend files. So what we're gonna do is go into a theme, whatever theme, doesn't matter what theme, I'm gonna use 2020. And you could just use, you know, the, the, the main 2020 theme, um, and then just open up and change the functions.php. But I created a child theme just because I'm trying to set a good example. It's not a good practice to edit the theme directly because if they update the theme, that's gonna overwrite your stuff, then that's not fun. But once you open up the child theme or your theme, whatever you're using, um, let's open up the functions.php. Let's copy everything after that opening PHP tag there and just hit copy. And then we're gonna paste that little guy into there. Let's make some notes here. 
and just say WordPress Ajax call. That's gonna autocomplete the callback. This is our JavaScript bit of the, the Ajax callback function. And this is our PHP bit. It's called a callback function basically because JavaScript is making the call and or making a call to PHP and PHP is going to call us back. So um, what's going on here is um, th this is our, our first function, which, you know, normally you should enqueue scripts when you're when, when you're loading JavaScript in WordPress. But in order to avoid that, make this simple, we're just going to print the script to the footer with this with this little function um, and the add action in underscore admin underscore footer. Um, that just makes it simple. So what this JavaScript portion is, we're creating a variable called fruit and that fruit equals banana. And then this is our little Ajax bit that is going to send our variable fruit to PHP. And then when PHP down here receives the request, it's going to say if our fruit variable, which is coming from the request equals banana, let's change that bad boy to apple and then let's send that guy back to javascript and echo that guy out that that fruit variable and we'll see the result so let's give this this guy a test let's save that and then go over to um, chrome and then we're going to go to our test website which for me is swd testing forward slash wp admin so we can get the login and but just go to whatever test site you're you're at and then hit your username and password and this should load our ajax request like as soon as we log in so let's see if we did everything right and go blimey we got an apple that's awesome so we did everything right um that was super easy if we go back to um, our code editor you know like it basically to go over it again our, our fruit variable got sent to PHP and PHP process it into an apple and sent it back to that and then made that pop up and and loaded our fruit variable which was apple so it worked so let's try something a little bit more fancy a little bit uh, more useful so let's click off of uh, this little guy here go back to Adam so before we move on to our front end Ajax call I wanted to point out a couple things that are going to be important for you to remember and just to understand so this right here in, the, in our JavaScript is is actually uh, what's telling PHP like what to fire off. So this action example underscore Ajax underscore request is attached to this action hook right here. And this is a special Ajax action hook, which is always prepended with WP underscore Ajax for the back end or WP underscore Ajax. Ajax underscore no priv for the front end, but we'll get into that in a minute when we go do our front end Ajax call. This is this part right here after WP underscore Ajax is what's attached to JavaScript. So this right here makes this function happen because of this. And it's a good idea to always name the function the same thing. That way you don't confuse yourself. You just know what's what. So the other thing that I want to point out too is you always want to die at the end of an Ajax function in PHP. Otherwise it could, you know, keep executing and under things, attended things will happen and you're like, what's going on? Um, so just make sure you have that at the end of your function. Okay, so let's close this out and because we don't need that anymore. And let's get rid of this little guy right here because we don't need this anymore. Let's go out to our tutorial blog um, right here. So now we're going to head over to this little back to top button, click that little bad boy right there, and then go down to this front end Ajax icon right here. Click that guy, scrolls you down there. And again, you can download the PDF guide and example files just by hitting this download button. It's going to ask for your email address. <laughs> if you're not into that again, uh, just use this section below that I provided. You can just copy that and follow along. Okay, so let's get into the front end Ajax call. So we're going to head back over to Adam. Uh, let's open up 
our folder and then we click on our WordPress Ajax call front end file and we're going to paste or copy all of this stuff right here and go over to the functions.php paste that guy in there hit save we're going to go back over to our tutorial because we need one little piece of code and this is the little bit we need and this is basically just a link so that JavaScript has an event to listen to in order to fire off our Ajax call. So we're going to paste that and in, in, go over to your test site and we're going to paste that into a new page. Hit this little add block button and then custom HTML. Paste that guy in there, hit publish, publish the page, yes, and then view the page. So if we did everything right, if we pasted all that good stuff in uh, the right places, what's going to happen is when we click on this banana right here, this little banana link, it should turn in magically into an apple because of our Ajax. So let's click that little guy right there. Go blam, it's an apple. So that was easy. Let's let's hop back over and try to figure out what happened. So let's start at the top here. There's a couple of things we need to do that we didn't have to do on the back end. The first one is we need to load jQuery, and we're doing that with this little bit here. We're en we're enqueuing uh, the jQuery script, so it's available on the front end. The next thing we need to do is we need to define the the AJAX URL, and we're going to do that when the wp underscore head hook fires then we're going to load this function and then that's going to define our admin dash ajax dot php url and that's all we need to do the little, uh, little extras there the javascript is basically the same the only difference is rather than using a window alert that little pop-up um, in order to view what's happening i'm just getting a little fancier with uh, this dot text uh, jQuery method and I'm swapping out the text for whatever is sent back from PHP and then I'm targeting our banana CSS class so when we click on the link uh, JavaScript is going to send out the call PHP is going to send the call back and we're sending banana it's going to send us back Apple and then it's just going to swap out the text and you saw that happen pretty basic but it just makes it a little bit cooler you know you actually get to do some front end ajax stuff and then the only difference with this php code down here is what we talked about earlier um, and that's our ajax uh, hook and you just have to add this extra wp underscore ajax under underscore no priv hook and that's pretty much it. it. It's it's pretty basic. I tried to make this as simple as possible. Um, hopefully it helped you understand Ajax in WordPress. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Um, if you got some value out of this video, um, please hit the like button. You know, subscribe. I'll be releasing more web development and SEO videos in the future. If you want to reach out and connect with me, I always love hearing from people. So uh, again, I hope this helped and thanks for watching.